Hello friends, this is Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and welcome to the Ascendancy episode of our Beginning Players Walkthrough. Uh, today I'm going to go over Ascendancies, kind of what they are, how to get into the Labyrinth, uh, the Trials of Ascendancy, and uh, what your Ascendancy can do for you. So Ascendancies uh, is basically an upgrade of your class. There are three different Ascendancies for each class, except for the uh, Scion, which has one Ascendancy called the Ascendant, which can gain aspects from any of the other classes' Ascendancies. Uh, and each of these kind of have their little uh, little perks. So we're playing a Ranger. The three, the three Ascendancies for a Ranger are the Deadeye, the Raider, and the Pathfinder. The Pathfinder focuses on flasks and gives you powerful bonuses and improves the effectiveness of your flasks. The Raider is all about speed. It focuses on frenzy charges and onslaught and phasing and just being very, very fast. And then the Deadeye is going to give you synergies to a lot of your bow skills. And it's going to give you things like uh, Pierce and Chain and lots of effects like that. So. Um, there are, and there's a lot more to it, but that's the basic rundown. Um, so basically, in order to, since we just beat Act 3, in order to uh, access the, the, uh, in order to access the Aspirant's Plaza, where you complete the Labyrinth to get your Ascendancy, you have to complete the Trials of Ascendancy. Now, because this switched over to a uh, solo self-bound standard which I don't really play but I played enough to get a couple of characters through um, I have them complete so I'm just gonna go through really quick and show you the trials of ascendancy um, the very first one requires six different trials of ascendancy and we'll go we'll go through the later trials as well uh, in a later video but to start with the very first you go to is the prison it's always almost always to the north here and the way this works is there are metal spikes that go around in a ring they do a substantial amount of damage and damage over time uh, you can wait for them to go around and then proceed to pull this lever now you have to be careful um, there are little I guess little areas that jut out here um, that allow you safety from them so you can kind of uh, set it up so that you're missed and you go through the door once you hit the lever so we have that first part the second part there are spikes that alternate in a checkered pattern here um, you can easily just pay attention to one where the spikes just were and proceed to stand stand there and they won't pop up again uh, you touch the trial of ascendancy plaque and it will go through the first one the next one is in the crypt in act two uh, so we're gonna pop back to town and we are going to go to Act 2. And the Crypt, well, on this character, I never visited the Crypt. So we'll get to go through the entirety. But basically, uh, you go south or southeast here at the crossroads. And it'll take you right to this uh, Felshire Ruins. Uh, Felshire Ruins is a very straightforward area. Um, you literally just follow the road. Um, there's probably a shortcut you can take. I know there are some back ways, but generally speaking you can just follow the follow the brick road through here All right, once you reach the end of the road, uh, you'll be led to the crypt a little broken uh, Temple or church out there or something uh, will lead you down into the crypt and the crypt says complete the labyrinth Lord's Labyrinth, uh, we will find that. I'm, this one, I'm not entirely sure if there is a set spawn point for it, but generally speaking, if you just kind of uh, go throughout, you'll be able to see it very easily on your mini-map when you're close. Alright, so here we are arriving at the second Trial of Ascendancy. Uh, this one, we have some rotating spikes. If you stand near them, They'll do a very high damage to you uh, for however long you stand, and they seem to 
Uh, if you run along them, they'll do a very substantial. They, they'll do a little bit less if you run through them. As you saw right there, I didn't take much. But do your best to avoid them. Uh, running through them, keep your flasks up. And it's a pretty quick area to get through. Um, as long as you're not literally standing on it. And we'll get to the Trial of Ascendancy here as well. Alright, moving on. Number three is found in Act 2 as well. Uh, it is in the Chamber of Sins. So the first thing you'll do is uh, navigate in the same way um, as, as you should through the Chamber of Sins to one of these uh, little square rooms in the corners of it. It'll never be to the northwest. That will always be the entrance, but it'll be one of the other three. And that'll take you down to Chamber of Sins level 2. Uh, in Chamber of Sins level 2, you're going to want to go basically southwest to find it. Uh, it will pretty much always be southwest, so shouldn't be too much of an issue. Um, oh, apparently my inventory is full. Alright, well, uh, so here we are to the Trial of Ascendancy. This time we have buzz saws, and they'll alternate. Uh, they're fairly easy to avoid. You can actually use your movement skills to get over them in a lot of cases. Um, they Sometimes you have to go over them if you don't want to use your movement skill. Uh, but they don't, as long as you're not standing on top of them and going along through them, they're very easy to get past. Um, now, the, all of these will become increasingly more difficult in the later iterations of the, uh, the Trials of Ascendancy. But as of now, these are quite easy, quite simple, and quite short. Uh, Chamber of Sins, next we're going to the Crematorium Act 3, where we saved um, Tolman, or where we failed to save Tolman is more accurate. Alright, I'm going to sell some of this stuff in my inventory because I want to be able to, you know, pick up some, get myself some chromatics if I need to. Alright, so moving on, we'll go to the crematorium, Act 3. And this is actually a fairly small zone, so it should be reasonably easy to find. Um, we're just going to do all these boxes really quick. Ooh, get that. 10 times Orb of Regret Divination card, not too bad. Alright. So we're uh, making our way through, looking for that nice little, uh, there we are. You can see it over here. So now we know where we need to go more or less, at least. Alright. And we found the next Trial of Ascendancy, in pretty short order. And this one is going to be uh, basically burning ground. There's going to be, uh, you'll see the ground light up. If you stand on it, you'll take damage over time. Uh, it's not that high of damage over time, but if uh, it's not something I would recommend standing on anyway. Uh, luckily, if you have something like Mirage Arrow, you can actually skip a majority of this and be in relatively little to no danger whatsoever. Uh, so. Yeah, a lot of movement skills will allow you to just instantly go from staircase to staircase without ever having to worry about standing on it in this first trial. So, very simple in that regard. Um, very quick, one of the easier ones overall. We'll go back, and moving on to the next one, it will be in the marketplace. And this one is in a very fixed location. Uh, it's always going to be basically right next to the waypoint. You go down to the catacombs. All right, and the catacombs is uh, a much bigger area than some of the other ones, so it's going to be a little bit tougher to find in comparison. So uh, basically you're just looking for the same kind of thing. You're looking for the book to present itself. The little book on your mini-map, and then you know which direction it is, and here we go. All right, easy. And this Trial of Ascendancy has what we call the Roombas. They're these little spinning death traps ah, that do damage over time based on uh, how long you stand on them. They're pretty scary. And uh, yeah, if you have good movement skill, once again, though, most of this is trivialized. You can just skip over all of it, and you're there. Uh, yeah. 
Movement skills are king in this game, you'll find that out very quickly. They can affect how fast you clear maps in the end game and how easily you get over these kinds of obstacles in the early game. Um, so next we're going to the Imperial Garden, which is the area prior to the Scepter of God. And in this location there will be another Trial of Ascendancy. Now they've moved this. I used to be very familiar where this is, but it used to have its own separate location. Uh, but they have moved it, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Uh, that's the library. There's also the... Uh, there's a side quest in this area where you have to find a plum. You may or may not be familiar. I usually don't do it because it just gives you a rare ring or something. Um, but, yep, somewhere in the northwestern corner here you'll find the the Trial of Ascendancy. Uh, this one, basically, it shoots poison darts. You can see little patterns. If you have a good movement skill, once again, you can kind of shoot yourself in between them. Uh, or you can walk into all of them, but for the most part, it's a fairly simple and very, very short one. Um, even there, I got hit only because I was stunned by the... Uh, by the Devourer. So we got all six Trial of Ascendancies. Once you've done that, you come up to this statue up here, you open it up, and you'll be taken to the Aspirant's Plaza. Uh, don't forget to grab the Waypoint so you don't have to go back to Act 3 every time you want to go back again. And then you go to the Labyrinth Activation Device, um, and you activate the Level 33 Labyrinth. We're level 32. We're a bit under leveled for this area and we're still using an old weapon. So this is probably going to be quite a challenge, but well, here we go. We're going to give it a shot. You'll get to actually see some of the mechanics at least of the fight. So we are going to uh, make our way. I like to go northeast in these first zones. Generally speaking, that leads you to the first door. Um, a lot of the doorways have traps in them, and then a lot of the rooms also have traps in them. So this looks like it's going to be a dead end. Uh, it does have a chest. You can get these decorated chests, and they'll give you uh, they'll give you ways you can easily beat the the different mechanics of the rooms. Basically, uh, the boss will have a gimmick for each stage, and all those you can either remove the gimmicks to make him weaker and easier to fight, which in theory you should do. Or if you want more treasure keys at the end to make more, uh, to make a decent amount more, I'm grabbing that silver flask. Uh, make a decent amount more loot at the end. Uh, you can just leave all of the challenges up. I'm going to attempt to do that, even though I'm a bit uh, weak at the moment, and it might end up being pretty problematic. It is something I'm interested in trying. So we're gonna go ahead and take the challenge. Um, I believe I'm in a dead end here, so I'm gonna head up this way. An Arcanist strong box. In reality, I should be rolling that, but here we are. Alright. So through the labyrinth we go. Slowly making our way. I can already tell by how little damage we're doing to the random mods that this fight is going to be very exciting. Let's put it that way. Uh, so I continue to stay along the northeast wall more or less, and it takes me to the first Aspirant Plaza. Now, the Aspirant's Plaza is a little area prior to the Emperor. It always has a stash, so if you're carrying too much stuff, you can uh, pop it in there. 46 to... Okay. So was I carrying this in order to 285? I don't remember from my last one. 322. It looks like we have an upgrade. Perfect. Very good, because... I was a little concerned that we weren't going to be strong enough. All right, so let's throw our uh, throw our other thing on here, and we are going to go through the door. Now, um, any vol skills that you charged up are going to be gone. Any buffs you had, they're going to be gone when you come in here, so be prepared for that. Um, and the Emperor has a lot of attacks, or uh, Izaro is his name. Um, he has this ghost on top of his head that kind of shoots little spirit orbs at you. Um, he has a nice little slam attack, he'll leap slam, and then he has a regular hammer attack. And they all do quite a bit of damage, uh, so do be wary of them. 
As a ranged character, we can try to like just kind of circle, circle strafe him. Um, he does summon adds, which you can use to get blast charges, which in long drawn out battles like this, very useful, of course. Uh, we just stood in place to drop our turret. Not, not a good play. Uh, the room is gradually filling up with more and more enemies. Alright, and we finally took down this stage. Once you take down about a quarter of his health or so, uh, he'll he'll pop back down underneath and you'll be through. I don't believe I took down any of the... Um, one of the ways you can navigate through the labyrinth is at the beginning of each of these there will be a labyrinth map. The m labyrinths become increasingly more difficult as you get higher, like Cruel, Merciless, and then the Uber Labyrinth. Um, this one is very straightforward. Uh, there are only two exits to this room. There's a forgotten reliquary here again, uh, which is the item that is making Izaro easier, or will make Izaro easier. Alright. Well, I'm gonna identify that grove bow. I feel like at this point any potential upgrade to our bow would be good. Uh, we did manage to get one, which was nice. I almost walked right into a trap, so you should pay more attention to me. Uh, generally speaking, close down that poem. <laughs> There's some lore in here if you want to engage in the lore of the labyrinth. From what I understand, Izaro was a... Well, I don't actually know. I'm not even going to get into it. So, once you get into the... Once you get into an exit, there will be a current location map beforehand, and it'll have a highlight to show you where it goes. Um, that means there's another exit that goes straight through, but there's only one exit to the next room, so I'd, I think it'll be just as fast to go this way for the most part. Kind of depends. Oop, we're standing on spikes. Not a great idea. Um, be wary of traps. There are lots of traps in the labyrinth itself. Um, just kind of make yourself aware. I feel like most of the times I've died in the labyrinth have been due to the traps. Uh, and occasionally it's been to Izaro's slam doing quite a bit of damage. But generally speaking, I've become inattentive in their traps. Such as right there. Wow. Look at those floating arrows. Nice. Alright. Not going to bother reading that poem. And we're going to try to head to the top right. I feel like heading to the top right has led me to a lot of good results in uh, in the labyrinth, generally speaking. There you go. Alright, see? Once again, top right pays off. We're to our second Aspirant's Trial. Alright, I'm just gonna toss my bow in a tab here, so I don't have to be carrying it around. In fact, um, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and toss a lot of our currency in here, too. We're at that stage where I just don't feel like carrying on with all this stuff. Alright, good enough. We'll carry the rest with us for now. <laughs> Alrighty. So, in we go. Um, maybe... Take out the Herald of Ice, put in Hatred for a little bit more damage. There you go. I must have been too low level. Oh, it's 24. If that's the case, then it was a, quite a while ago. Alright, so this is the Conduit of Storms. It's going to give Azaru extra damage, uh, extra lightning damage specifically. And there's one for each element, and I'm being very, uh, let's say brave, <laughs> by allowing him to keep all three of them up. We just took a slam, got stunned, um, boy, maybe trying to get all the treasure keys was a mistake here. Oh, if we pull it off. I'll be pretty happy with that, but... Oh, no. Alright, we managed to take him down. This is gonna be fun. The final room has traps in it, so... Alright, so once we go through, we can kind of see 
Okay, there are two exits, so there are probably two more rooms until the final one. Make sure we're killing some mobs to get our flash charges up. Uh, there's a lot of hidden secrets in the traps, but or in the labyrinth. Uh, engaging them at the later levels might be worth it in terms of gaining currency, but in these earlier ones, I don't find them particularly worth it to engage with. Alright. It looks like we're gonna have to go through some sort of uh, some sort of room with some with some traps in it in order to get through here. So you can kind of get an idea of what's going on through the mini map here. You can see that there are various levers to press. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm not gonna make it in time. I tried to speed through. Um, yeah, what you can kind of do in these situations is hit as many levers as you can, uh, make sure you keep your movement skill up, and then when the, when the, oh wow, when it goes away, when the fire goes away, you can pop back under. Alright, I'm not going to make it. Uh, I thought I could make it around that corner, but it was congested with skeletons, so we're going to go up this way, it looks like, maybe. Oh, we're going down. And these skeletons, we have no damage mitigation. Alright, try to make it around this corner, and we did it. Oh, I say we did it, but here we are walking right into a Roomba. Alright. And the exit is likely up here somewhere. There we are. Alright, so this will take us down to another room that has, uh, oops, wow. <laughs> this will take us down to another room that has uh, two exits, so we're, we're going to try to make sure we're going to the right one this time. Get frozen. Oh, one thing to note, I'm being very reckless here uh, because I'm fairly confident, but you should be much more careful, because if you die, uh, you have to restart the labyrinth. Uh, it's not so bad in the normal labyrinth because of how short it is, and the labyrinth will be the same for an entire day, but it is very disheartening when you're doing like one of the longer ones, like the Uber Lab, and you're struggling your way through it, and uh, yeah, that can be very disheartening. So, alright, luckily we made it to the Aspirant's Trial. Uh, and you will, you cannot portal out. Well, you can, but you will leave. Uh, you will not be able to come back if you portal out. So that's one thing to make note of as well. Very important. All right, the final room has traps as well as any of the... Uh, we have the three portals and the three conduits. So any of the things you have added to make this more difficult for yourself. So we are going to kind of try to hang out in the corners. Uh, looks like the traps are disabled. I wonder if there are no longer active traps in the, in the room. Or in the normal difficulty specifically. Or if I had done something to make it so that the traps didn't work. Oh man. Alright, we're gonna try to get some volleys down on him. We're trying our best to Kind of laying the, down the covering fire, not get surrounded. Uh, try to put ourselves in a situation that we can get out of. Getting stuck in a corner is always very bad. You want to leave yourself plenty of room for mobility. Oh, I say as I put myself right next to a bunch of guys that can freeze me. And then immediately run into a corner. Alright, looks like we got him. Alright, so I finish off the guys in this room. We will go grab our treasures. So first things first, uh, because you do get kicked from the uh, before you grab the loot and before you go up here to enchant your gloves, uh, grab the altar of ascendancy and kind of look through and figure out. I've decided I'm going to be a raider uh, because I like the playstyle of the raider and dead eye isn't really uh, super important with our if we're going to continue to use rain of arrows. So, we're going to go for the Raider. Pathfinder is fun too, um, and can give you a lot of great advantages, but I personally, for ease of use, going to go Raider. So we're going to Ascend first, 
Uh, I'm going to grab the Frenzy Charge skill points. Um, and then you can use your treasure keys. Uh, in this case, I got three to open these up. You get a decent amount of, of loot, depending on how many keys you get, of course. Um, we can check all these out. Superior Death Blow. Uh, there's another couple bows up there. We're going to be looking at all the bows. And Tricorn and Festive Wings. Hang on. Move this around. There you go. And this device here uh, lets you enchant your gloves. And then the second one will let, let you enchant your gloves or boots. And the third one will let you enchant your gloves, boots, or helmet. So uh, this will give us Word of Frost on kill, which is pretty cool. Um, and yeah, that is pretty much it. So I'm going to check out my loot. I uh, didn't got a that's a pretty nice elemental bow but we are not really scaling elemental damage at the moment i'm actually going to double check though 418 compared to uh, nope not even close okay i mean i know we lose hatred but hatred scales off our physical end all right and that was the labyrinth we are now no longer a ranger we are a raider specifically so um pretty cool as you can see i'm just going to go through this uh there's a couple of different trees in all of them um this one gives me there are little mini nodes that give you just stats this one gives me attack speed a uh, chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill and chance to gain a frenzy charge when i hit a rare or unique enemy frenzy charges give you more damage and also more attack speed so uh, having a bunch of frenzies is always nice this one will give us an additional bonus for uh, having frenzy charges along with one plus one maximum frenzy charge so that's very powerful um, and then there's this one that gives you synergy for phasing which allows you to run through things and gives you movement speed um, and then this one will give you uh, elemental damage so this is nice for uh, elemental rangers specifically and spell dodge while phasing which is very powerful um, this one gives you Onslaught, which gives you uh, attack speed, cast speed, and movement speed. 20% of each, which is huge. 20% movement speed, uh, absolutely great. And it's very easy to keep Onslaught up. So, gain Onslaught for 10 seconds on kill. 10% chance to gain Onslaught for 10 seconds when you hit. Uh, and then gives you increased attack damage. So this one is also a good one for consideration as your very first one. Onslaught's very, very powerful. So... Um, and then you'll get increased onslaught effect, which is fantastic, and then attack damage. So my plan is to get this and then go down the onslaught uh, tree. You can actually do it the opposite way, um, you know, being able to get that extra evasion, uh, onslaught effect. It's very fast, but yeah, Raider's all about going fast. Um, check out the different the different ascendancy classes for whatever class you're playing and see which one suits your playstyle the most. I hope you enjoyed. This has been Ryan from Behind Eyes Gaming, and I will see you next time. Bye! Thank you to all of my patrons for your generous support. Without you, I would not be able to continue making content. If you would like to be featured in the credits or find out how to help support me on Patreon, check out the link in the description below. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. Bye!